Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Raspberry Pi 5. We do a quick overview of the hardware, breaking down each component. We will also be comparing it to its predecessor, the Raspberry Pi 4. We'll look at performance, connectivity and power efficiency. Whether you are looking to upgrade or you're just curious, stay tuned as we cover all the important differences and upgrades between these two boards. Let's start with the CPU and the GPU. The Raspberry Pi 5 is powered by a quad-core Cortex A76 processor clocked at 2.4 GHz and paired with a Video Core 7 GPU. Compared to the Pi 4's 1.8 GHz Cortex A72 and Video Core 6 GPU, the Pi 5 offers around 2 to 3 times the processing power and significantly better graphic performance for tasks like 4K video playback, light gaming and multitasking. The Pi 5 also features 2GB, 4GB and 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM, which is faster than the Pi 4's LPDDR4 RAM. This results in smoother performance, especially in memory intensive tasks like databases and AI projects. A major new addition to the Raspberry Pi 5 is the onboard power button and the single lane PCIe 2.0 interface, enabling the connection of high speed NVMe SSDs for faster storage, which is a massive upgrade from the Pi 4's reliance on micro SD cards. This is perfect for the users who want more storage speed for things like media servers and web hosting. The Raspberry Pi 5 now includes dual four lane MIPI CSI DSI ports, delivering increased bandwidth for both cameras and displays. This allows users to connect and run two Raspberry Pi cameras simultaneously, a significant improvement over the Pi 4, which was limited to one camera at a time. The high bandwidth also enhances support for more advanced high resolution cameras or dual displays, making it ideal for complex projects such as multi-camera setups in robotics, machine visions or surveillance systems. The Raspberry Pi 5 offers dual 4K at 60Hz micro HDMI ports, providing the ability to output two 4K displays simultaneously right out the box. This is a notable upgrade from the Pi 4, which only supported a single 4K at 60Hz output by default. There is also the new RP1 input output chip, which handles USB and Ethernet tasks, offloading these from the CPU, ensuring overall better system performance. The Raspberry Pi 5 retains the familiar configuration of two USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0 ports from the Raspberry Pi 4. However, thanks to the new RP1 controller, the Raspberry Pi 5 significantly improves data handling. This allows the USB 3.0 ports to fully support simultaneous 5 gigabytes per second speeds on both ports. On the Pi 4, while the USB 3.0 ports were fast, there were bandwidth limitations when using multiple devices, which could cause a slowdown in data transfer. With the Pi 5, you can expect more consistency and faster speeds when transferring large amounts of data, particularly when using devices like external SSDs or high-speed peripherals. This improved performance makes the Pi 5 better suited for tasks that require sustained high-speed data transfers, such as media centers or home server setups. The Raspberry Pi 5 retains the standard 40-pin GPIO header, ensuring compatibility with most existing hats from previous Raspberry Pi models, including the Pi 4. However, there are some exceptions, particularly with PoE, power over internet, hats. On the Pi 5, the PoE header has been relocated, so the PoE hats designed for the Pi 4 or the Pi 3B Plus will not be compatible with the Raspberry Pi 5 due to this new placement. For general GPIO based hats, there should be no issues in terms of compatibility, but it's always a good idea to check the specific requirements for more advanced hats to ensure smooth functionality. Another important change is the removal of the 3.5mm audio jack. Audio now comes through HDMI or Bluetooth, so if you're using legacy audio devices, you'll need to adjust your setup. Power management has seen an upgrade. The Pi 5 now requires a 27 watt USB-C power supply, offering more headroom for high performance tasks. An optional active cooler is available to maintain performance under heavy load, which will help avoid thermal throttling. This leads us into our final topic, the thermal performance of the Raspberry Pi 5. Let's take a closer look at how it handles heat and what advancements have been made to keep it cool, even during heavy workloads. The Raspberry Pi 5 has significantly improved thermal management over the Raspberry Pi 4. Without cooling, the Pi 5 idles around 65 degrees, slightly warmer than the Pi 4. Under load, it can reach 85 degrees, triggering thermal throttling. However, even when throttled, it still performs faster than the Pi 4. 
With an active cooler, the Pi 5 idles at around 45 degrees and stabilizes around 62 to 63 degrees under heavy load, avoiding throttling. For normal use, adding cooling is optional as it will only throttle under sustained heavy workloads, making cooling unnecessary for lighter tasks. Should you upgrade to the Raspberry Pi 5? It really depends on what you plan to do with it. If you are primarily using a Raspberry Pi for basic tasks like web browsing or light IoT projects, the Pi 4 remains a reliable and cost-effective choice. However, if you're working on more intensive projects like media service, AI applications, or need faster data handling, the Raspberry Pi 5 is a significant upgrade. With a more powerful CPU and GPU, support for PCIe storage, enhanced connectivity and better thermal management, the Pi 5 is ideal for advanced users or anyone who requires additional power for demanding workloads. If your projects are pushing the limits of the Pi 4's capabilities, the Pi 5 is well worth considering. What do you think? Will you be upgrading to the Pi 5? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future episodes. Feel free to check out our website at www.addictedtotech.net for more resources and project ideas. All that's left for me to say now is thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.